is David Charles Abel, and I'm the conductor of Kiss Me Kate Opera North. I was asked to conduct Kiss Me Kate at Glimmerglass Opera in New York State in 2008, and I've done a lot of Broadway repertoire. It, it's sort of in my DNA as an American musician. I grew up both on classical music and Broadway shows. Having conducted a lot of Broadway repertoire, I knew that the orchestra parts and scores are usually in terrible shape. For the great European composers, from Mozart, Bach, and Beethoven, and most of the great opera composers, you have, as a conductor, you have a very nice bound score, which an editor has gone through and made sure there are no mistakes, and that it's correct according to what the composer actually wrote and what they performed at the time. For Broadway, you don't get that at all. You have a piano score, which is just two lines of music, and um, a bunch of orchestra parts. So you don't know what the flute is playing, what the clarinet is playing, what the violins are playing, the cellos, at any given time. All you have is this piano score, and you put the parts up, and you start waving your arms, and what comes out? Well, it can be anything. And some shows are in awful shape. For instance, if you want to do Luck Be a Lady from Guys and Dolls, and you have your piano score and a bunch of parts that are handwritten from the 1950s, and they don't match each other, they might be in different keys, it's, it's just awful. So I had learned by 2008 never to conduct a Broadway show without a full orchestral score. Quite often, I've had to create my own orchestral scores of Broadway shows. And the way you do that is you take the parts that the publisher sends you, and you put every part into a computer program, and you look at them all together. Because obviously you can't have 15 books all around you and look at them all at once. You need a score, which as the conductor, it's like the teacher's edition of a textbook, let's put it that way. So in 2008, I, I looked around and I tried to find the original manuscripts that the orchestrators had written for Kiss Me Kate. No one knew where they were. I went to the Library of Congress, I went to New York Public Library, Yale University, where Cole Porter went to school and where I also went to school many years later than Cole. And uh, no one knew where it was. And finally, I was directed to a lawyer's office in Midtown Manhattan. Well, they're the lawyers for the Cole Porter Trusts. So Cole Porter's heirs still get royalties from this music. And they said, we have a lot of music on our shelves, we're not sure what it is, come and have a look. And I went in and I saw on their shelves some yellowing bits of music paper with ink pen writing on it. it turned out it was about 75 or 80% of the show in the original orchestrator's manuscripts by the two orchestrators of the show, who were the greatest orchestrators of their time. And they made copies of them for me. I conducted off of that, so I was able to use the existing parts and correct mistakes, and there were hundreds of mistakes in those parts, hundreds. Uh, at that point, but I knew also that um, we could go further with it. And when I learned that the original orchestra parts from the Broadway production 1948 to 51 had survived, or most of them at least, I knew that we could do what's called a critical edition of the show. So I went to the lawyers and I brought a, with me a, a beautiful bound score of Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream, which is in green cloth binding and it's got Mendelssohn's signature on the front in gold lettering. And I handed that to the lawyer and I said, Kiss Me Kate could look like this. And he said, oh, tell, that's, that's rather interesting. How much would it cost? <laughs> and I said, well, I'll come back to you on that. And, and I did. And uh, he said, well, if you can take $10,000 off it, we'll do it. So I did. And um, my uh, co-editor, Sean Alderking, and I spent the next four years between gigs, going through all of the sources, all the original sources. This is like looking at Mozart's score of The Marriage of Figaro. It's, it's equivalent to that. And uh, making notes on them and deciding what was correct. Should this note be a B flat or a B natural? And in a critical edition, it's not enough to make that decision. You actually have to document it. So for every decision you make, B flat or B natural, you have to write a footnote. So at the end of the score, there are hundreds of footnotes. Uh, every song has footnotes. And um, we made charts as far as uh, the development of the numbers. You know, they went into rehearsal with a song, and then they added an introduction, and they changed the key, then they added a dance routine. And we sort of had to do some detective work. Or even, even better analogy would be, we're like archaeologists digging around in the ruins to find out what, what's original. And we were able to document, OK, we think this is what happened in this order. So it was published last year. Um, I did a sort of trial run of the concert performance at Yale, and then John Wilson conducted it at the proms with his orchestra in a concert version, and now at Opera North we are doing the first fully staged production of the critical edition of Kiss Me Kate.
One thing I didn't quite suspect when I was asked to conduct my own edition of Kiss Me Kate was that I would still have to be making changes. But Joe Davis is a very creative director, Will Tuckett, very creative choreographer. And with a Broadway show, the text, the score, and the script, that's really only the starting point. From there, the creators of the production reimagine it. And um, so Joe and Will and I have, have well, we've, I haven't actually made changes, but we've sometimes just reimagined it for an audience in 2015. So sometimes the orders of things have changed. We've transposed a couple of things to a different key if it's better for the singers. And we restored some things from the appendix of the edition, things which didn't end up in the final show, but which we found and might have been cut. Um, and we put, put bits of those back in. So the scene change music, for instance, is different. So every time the set moves, you'll be hearing something which we put in from, it's all by Cole Porter, it's all by the orchestrators, it's all by Bella Spiewak who wrote the book, but we put them in different places sometimes. So to finally be conducting my own edition of Kiss Me Kate here at Opera North is absolutely amazing. It's all there in print, I know it's correct, and the orchestra is sounding incredible, doing all the original orchestrations, we have five saxophones, we've restored their parts, uh, we have a mandolin and guitar player, a cellista and harp, and all sorts of wonderful colors in the orchestration. And all I have to do is raise the stick and, and do that, and they play it. And it's correct, and it's wonderful. <laughs>